What is going on guys? Welcome to this video. In today's episode, we're going to use background subtraction in order to filter out the motions or the changing objects of a video. So we're going to take a video like this one here, where people are walking around a place. And what we're interested in is which objects of this video are moving. And where we want to filter out the movements and ignore the rest. So we're going to end up with something like this one where we basically just get the changing objects, the moving objects and their edges. So this is what we're going to do today. So let us get into the code. So as always, the first thing that you want to do is you want to make sure that you have installed the libraries that we're going to need. So we're going to run CMD here, activate the Conda environment if we're using one and then just type pip install opencv minus Python. This is the library that we're going to need for today's video. In my case, it says uh, already satisfied, otherwise it's going to install it. So the first thing we do is we import CV2. I like to give it an alias of CV, just in case you know they publish CV3, so I can just change the 2 to a 3 and I have the same code. Um, so this is the import, and then the next thing that you want to do is you want to get the video file into the script. So what you do is you take a video, uh, you can make this video yourself with your camera, you can just... Uh, download it from Google or uh, YouTube or whatever. Uh, and you want to take this file and put it into the same direction as your script. And once you have done this, what you do is you type video equals CV dot video capture. And here you pass the file name. So in my case, people dot MP4. Now, what you could also do is you could go ahead and use your camera as the video data. So in order to do that, you just say uh, video equals CV dot video capture zero or one or two, uh, depending on how many cameras you got. If you have one camera, it's going to be zero. And if you have multiple, it's zero, one, two, three, and so on. Um, I'm not able to do this in this video since I'm recording with this camera right now. But if I wasn't recording, I could just uh, use zero and we could apply the motion filtering or the background subtraction onto the camera. You can do this at home if you have a camera, but I'm not able to do this in this video. But usually you want to use the camera data since, uh, you know, this is very useful for surveillance systems and so on. So it doesn't make a lot of sense to use it on videos that are already uh, that are that are representing past data. So you want to have a live motion filtering. But as I said, I'm not able to do this in this video. However, the next thing you want to do is you want to define a subtractor object. So this object is the object that is going to do all the work for us. Uh, very simple since we're using a library here we don't have to do anything uh on our own so we just say subtractor equals and then we say cv create background uh, background subtractor mog2 this is what we're going to use and here we pass two parameters the first one is the history so how long back or how far back should i look for changes so basically if this is a very small value it is only going to visualize the parts that are moving very uh, in, in a very high frequency. Uh, and if this is a larger value, it's going to look farther back. Um, so basically, let's take uh, 20 here. And the threshold is basically just a threshold that, you know, we accept. So 50 in this case, you can, as always, tweak around these values and play around with them uh, to see if you get better results. And then what we do is we want to visualize the data. So what we're going to do is we're going to run an endless loop and we're going to visualize the video frame by frame with the subtractor applied already. So we're going to say while true. And then we're going to use the read function of the video and the read function of the video returns two values. The first one is just a return value. And the second one is the current frame of the video. So we're going to say video dot read. And now what we're going to do is we're going to say if return value. So if the return value exists, if it's there, uh, we're going to process it. We're going to visualize uh, this video and otherwise we're going to do something else. So we're going to say mask equals and we're going to say subtractor apply. We want to apply the subtractor object that we just defined onto the frame that we currently have for visualization. And then we're just going to say cv.imshow uh, mask mask and then that's basically it the only thing that we need to do now is we're going to say if uh, cv dot wait key with a delay of five if this equals the key x 
we're just going to break the loop. So basically, um, what this does is as soon as we press the key X, the video or the whole script terminates because we break out of this loop and that's it. Uh, it's just so we have a way to terminate it because what happens if we don't have a return value if the video is done because you know the, uh, the video is like eight seconds or something. And if we have seen the whole video, it's going to actually terminate the script because we don't have a return value. But if we don't have a return value, what we're going to do is we're just going to reset the video. So we're going to say video equals CV dot video capture um, people dot MP4. So basically we're running it in a loop over and over again with the camera. You don't need to do this. So because you know, the camera is running all the time. However, that's actually the only thing that we need to do now is we're going to say CV destroy all windows and uh, video dot release. So just closing everything up and that's it. Let's run it. It should work perfectly. And as you can see, it works. It's pretty easy, very short code, impressive result. And we can now go ahead and for example, increase the history to 90. So I think we're going to see a little bit more white here. Yeah, as you can see, you can see some lines in the, in the uh, bottom or on the floor. And, you know, you can just go ahead and say, I don't know, 300 or something to see even more changes. Okay. Yeah, you can see more of the shadows. Uh, it's much brighter. If you like it that way, because uh, what, what you see here is that the uh, whole body is white instead of just the edges. So you might want to, you, you might prefer this one. Otherwise, let's just go ahead and increase this to 200. See what happens. Uh, yeah, doesn't change it too much. However, um, okay, I hope the recording is not lagging too much right now. Uh, however, that's how you do it. It's just a simple background subtraction. Of course, the process behind it is, uh, is much more complicated, but since we're using just this object here uh, and not coding anything ourselves, it's very easy to apply. So that's basically how I do it. So that's it for today's video. It was a very simple video, a very short video, but I think the output is quite impressive for such uh, a little amount of code. So if you enjoyed it and if you learned something, hit the like button and let me know in the comments. Also feel free to ask questions and give feedback in the comments. And if you haven't subscribed to this channel yet, go and do so to see more future videos for free. Uh, other than that, thank you very much for watching and see you in the next video. Bye.